Hello everyone, I'm Denise Hackett with the Smith County Chamber of Commerce Corner Show and we're here to welcome you, Janie Mundy and myself, to our Chamber program and connect you with the many happenings going on in Smith County. Janie, we have an excellent show planned for everyone today. We sure do. I'm usually excited anyway, but I'm really excited today because well, they're going to find out, right? Yes, they are, and we are on, we are at a very, very special location, a new museum in Smith County, and we're going to be showcasing them here in just a few minutes, but first off, I want to introduce Karen Hackett. Karen is with the Jordan Hackett Foundation, and she's going to tell us about a special event they have coming up May 5th. Karen, can you tell us a little bit about how the Jordan Hackett Foundation began and What's the purpose and, and why we do this special run? In June of 2002, my husband Stephen and I welcomed our son Jordan. He was born with a severe heart defect and spent most of his life at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. While he was there, we stayed at the Ronald McDonald House. Jordan passed away in October of 2002 at the age of four months. After he passed, we decided that we would like to do something to give back to the Ronald McDonald House and to Vanderbilt for all that had been done for us. And we also wanted to be able to pay it forward to families who would be going through what we went through. So we started the Jordan Hackett Foundation. It began with memorials made when Jordan passed. And we spent that money down over the next year and a half by donating it to the hospital and the Ronald McDonald House. We decided that we would really like to be able to continue doing that annually, so we needed a fundraiser. Stephen had started running for therapy after Jordan passed, and as a hobby, just began doing races kind of in the area. Mm -hmm. And he came up with the idea that we could host a 5K race to raise money to donate. We didn't know what we were doing, but with many volunteers and asking lots of questions, from people that knew and we faith started, that it could be done and faith that it could be done we started and the first year we had around 200 participants and now we average a little over 400 oh my wow. goodness that is fabulous from everywhere from everywhere all over the mid-state um, the first year we raised nine thousand dollars and for the past four years we've raised a little over 30 Wow. So we feel very blessed to be able to donate what we raise to the Ronald McDonald House and the Children's Hospital and also help families from here that have to be there for lengthy times. That's a wonderful, wonderful ministry and, and a wonderful way to carry on and, and to make something. I know it was a very tragic event in your life, but you have made a very positive thing out of it as well as helped. There's no telling how many families that you've helped through the Ronald McDonald House. And people anywhere can be a part of this and be a part of, it's a walk race, right? Yes, a walk or run. We have probably half and half of walkers and runners. It's not a very easy course, so we encourage training a little bit for it. Okay, <laughs> and it's, it comes up this May 5th. Yes, Saturday, May 5th. It typically rains. But we carry on anyway. Yes, you do. Lots in of rain people gear. have told us that they enjoy running in the rain because it's a little cooler. We'll take sunshine, though, if that comes our way, too. Well, and um, you have walkers. I've seen those that participate with strollers. We have a stroller division. I've seen those that participate with dogs. On a leash, that's fine. And yes. then you have those to the very serious. Exactly. A whole gamut. But the registration is $20, am I correct? That's correct, and it includes a t-shirt. And, and Karen brought this t-shirt. This is a t-shirt from, uh, is it all of the race? The first seven. The first seven. Ramona Wilmore made this t-shirt quilt for Karen, and it wow. has those t-shirts um, from the race in that, and that's a very special keepsake. Very state. special, yes. And now, where do you do, uh, where do you meet, and like if I wanted to come and do this, and I really want to this year, where do I come? The Cordell Hall Dam, okay. outside of Carthage, and be sure it's on the Carthage side. We've had people to go to the Sullivan's Bend side, oh my goodness. or Horseshoe Bend, yes. okay. and uh, that's about 45 minutes drive time around to get to our side, but on the Carthage side of Cordell Hall Dam. At what time? 8 o'clock. Okay. And they can come to, to register. You'll be there as early as 6.30, right? That's right. We do encourage pre-registering so that we know how many t-shirts to order without 
having some left over. And I saw the registration forms in the Carthage Courier. They'll be in there for the next two weeks. As well as you have a website That's that right. they can download. Can you tell everyone the website? It's www.jordanhackett.org and there's a link to 5K registration from there. And we also um, have registration forms at the chamber that anyone could pick up as well. So, and if you have any questions, please feel free to call the chamber. It's in the courier. Um, we'll be happy to direct you. And Karen, thank you very thank you. much. We're very glad that you do this. And I know that not only have you helped people from around the world that come to Vanderbilt, but you've helped a lot of people from Smith County who have had infants born or children that have had to be at the Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. Yes, it happens more than we re really realize until it's part of our life and then it tends to show up in other places that, exactly. that we didn't see before. Well, we hope that the sun shines this time and you have a wonderful turnout. Thank you. I'll see you there. I'll see you. Th thanks for coming. We have with us today, well, sp several guests, Denise, but uh, the person that I'd like to introduce you to right now is from the Department of Health, and uh, her name is Dawn Hickey. Welcome to the show today. Don, something is taking place on April 19th. Would you please uh, tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I'm with the emergency preparedness section uh, with the Department of Health out of Cookville. And our emergency uh, preparedness section, along with many agencies here in Smith County, Macon County, and Putnam County, are putting on a full-scale point of dispensing exercise on April the 19th. A point of dispensing. Yes. Explain what that means. Okay. Uh, after the terrorist attacks uh, in 9-11, uh, the emergency preparedness section was formed out of all the health departments, and we created a plan uh, to respond against a bioterrorism event. It could be smallpox, it could be anthrax, um, and we have created what we call a point of dispensing site. And these are just sites that uh, the general public would go to to receive vaccines or medications during a public health emergency. And we practice, uh, we practice running these sites each year. Okay, how can Smith County be involved in this? Um, actually, a lot of people from Smith County is involved. We have uh, the, ho the hospitals involved, the EMA, uh, the ambulance service, the sheriff, the police. Um, just a lot of different agencies have helped us the past few months plan this big exercise. So can businesses be a part of this as well? Yes, businesses okay. and residents both. Um, and the way they can do that is to become a part of the Medical Reserve Corps, and that's what I deal with, and that's our volunteers. Um, this is just a nationwide program that's a group of volunteers that want to help out during an emergency. Um, there's medical and non-medical people both. Um, the name is Medical Reserve Corps, but we serve, we have both kinds of volunteers and we need both kinds of volunteers. Um, there's over 900 units across the nation. We have 12 here in the state of Tennessee. And we, um, this, our, our unit serves the Upper Cumberland region. We uh, serve Smith County and all the counties kind of that surround Putnam County. So you take volunteers, yes. if they'd like to volunteer, who do they need to contact? They need to contact me um, at 931-520-4208. Now, where is this going to be held? Um, it's going to be at the Agriculture Center here in Smith County. Okay, and that is located off Highway 53 on Ag Center Lane. It, go past the soccer field, and the Ag Center is in the very back. And the date again and the times? Um, it's April 19th, and if you want to participate, you just need to give me a call at 931-520-4208. With the, with the instabilities, I mean, this is an important thing, you know. Um, it very much country. is. It very much is, and it's something that we want to have intact should something happen. And I think I'm correct in saying those that volunteer, um, that gives them, should an emergency occur, them and their family would receive the medications first. That's correct. All those volunteers will. And if anyone has any questions, I have all the contact information at the Chamber of Commerce as well as it's on the Chamber of Commerce website. But this is something that is is. I feel safer knowing that mm -hmm. someone is preparing for me in case of an emergency mm -hmm. and this is going to be going on here in Smith County and it involves three different counties yes. and so uh, a very very important exercise and we're happy to help in any way and we're very fortunate to have it in yes, Smith we County. We, we appreciate your help and, and we'd love love more help just give us a call. Thank you. Thank, well, thank you, you for, for being with us thank today. You so thank you. We have Smith County CASA Executive Representative Laura Swanson with us today, and Laura is with Smith County CASA. Laura, tell me a little bit about what is Smith County CASA and what does CASA stand for? I know it's one of those acronyms it that is. stands for something. It is. CASA is an acronym that stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. We are part of a nationwide program. Across the United States, there are about a thousand 
CASA programs um, it all over, and the where can we stop? <laughs> yes. Okay, just keep going. Um, CASA is an acronym. It stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. We are a part of a nationwide program, and there are about a thousand programs across the United States. Each uh, each organization is a separate nonprofit. And in the state, in, in Tennessee, there are 44 counties that have CASA programs, um, but only 23 programs. So some counties have multiple counties. Some programs have multiple counties underneath their, their umbrella. Okay, I understand. And this month is a very special month. April is what? April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. And it's important for those in the community to, to know this and to understand this because uh, child abuse does not discriminate based on age, gender, socioeconomic status. It happens to anyone at any given time. Uh, in Smith County last year, there were 200 cases that the Department of Children's Services investigated. Mm -hmm. um, and and th that's, you know, in your community. And, and to, you know, to give you a perspective, um, you know, it's, it's not, I guess I should say, as bad as it could be. Um, Putnam County had 700. Uh, Wilson County had wow. 786, and DeKalb County had, um, it, it was a little over 200, but I don't remember the exact number, but it was a little, a little over 200. And of those children, um, if a child has to be removed from his or her home, there has to be court involvement. Right. At that time, CASA comes in. And last year, CASA served 39 children in Smith County. Mm -hmm. We provided a volunteer advocate to them, a trained volunteer advocate, and our volunteers do many things for these children. They uh, speak for them in court, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. They speak to the child uh, and make sure that their wishes and needs are known to the court. In turn, that makes Judge Bass have more information so he can make a more informed decision. That's wonderful. And these advocates are trained. They are trained. It's, you know, you can't just come in off exactly. the street and say, I want to be a volunteer. And, and what I've learned is they're the one constant in exactly. that child's life. Because at this point in their lives, if they've been taken out of their home, they don't have very much consistency. But this volunteer is the one person that's helping yes. them and assisting them. Yes. Well, how does an individual... And I know they don't have to have a certain degree. No. They could be me or Jamie. Exactly. And they can. How do you become a volunteer? Well, the first step is a phone call. Mm -hmm. um, our office number is 735-0034. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, there are also CASA programs um, over tennis, all over Tennessee. So, you know, we, we're not just limited to Smith County. We can also refer you, you know, in the county. You, know, you may live in DeKalb County or some other county. Um, but we can make sure that you get connected to the right CASA program. But the first step is to make a phone call and just let us know of your interest. To be a CASA volunteer, you have to complete 30 hours of training, which, which we do uh, through uh, 10 different sessions. We have, each volunteer has to have a criminal background check mm -hmm. and also um, have three references and be fingerprinted. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's a little more in-depth mm -hmm. than just you know, showing up to, to something to volunteer one time. This is about a year commitment in the life of a child, mm -hmm. um, but you know, know that each volunteer is making a difference in the life of that child because they do have that one consistent person from day one until day whenever. Whenever they get. But it is a good way to make a difference in, someone li in someone's life that needs it very exactly. much at that time. Exactly. But now you mentioned you're a non-for-profit. How yes. do you fund this? How is all this? I know that you have to work diligently to get funding for this program for it to even exist. And it is well needed in Smith County, so. It is. Um, currently, we receive a grant from the National Cost Association. That grant will be expiring on June 30th and it is not renewable. Um, we are funded through grants, donations, community fundraisers, um, and you are responsible. You work very diligently yes. to try to get those funds. And yes. You are responsible for actually trying to get those funds so that we can have this program in Smith County. Exactly. Um, uh, we Private have, donations exactly. as well, I'm sure. Exactly. Um, and we are struggling a little bit with that, trying to make sure that the program continues. Um, I'm not really sure what is going to happen, but we will, we will make it work. 
Well, Janie, it is a wonderful program and much needed in Smith County. And it's something that you can help in many ways because it helps so many children in Smith County. And these are children in Smith County that you're working with and you're bettering their lives. So if you, exactly. if you help a child in Smith County, it makes a difference, not only in the child's life, but in Smith County as well. It helps them to grow. And if they can see a different way of life, Exactly. It helps them to grow and be more productive and so that they stop the cycle. Exactly. And don't continue the same cycle of abuse and neglect that's, that's, that has gone on in their life and probably even their parents' lives. Exactly. Well, it's a wonderful program that we have in Smith County. Thank you for coming here today. And, and we'll definitely have your information at the chamber. So if anyone has any questions, if they can't reach you, they're welcome to call and we will get the information to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming. We have with us today a mother-daughter team. This is Jessica and Debbie Glover. My memory goes quick. And they are with Odyssey Hospice. And I'll have to say, ladies, that I truly appreciate what you are doing for the people of Smith County because uh, when my mother passed, we actually had to have a hospice in with my mother for those two weeks. And they were one of the most the biggest blessing really that we had during that time and I want to say personally thank you for what you do but for those who have never heard of hospice uh, would one of you please tell us a little bit about what hospice is and what it can do for folks okay first of all I'm going to tell you a little bit about Odyssey Hospice we're one of the nation's leading hospice agencies and we've been in business for over 40 years and we cover Smith County and the um, Upper Cumberland area through our Cookville office, which was formerly Lazarus House, and we cover Macon, Smith, and those counties. Uh, and then out of our Nashville office, we cover Wilson and the counties west. So we're able to service most of, most of Middle Tennessee and eastern part of Tennessee. And as far as the question of what is hospice, I think it's really important to know that hospice is a philosophy of care rather than a place a lot of people think that you have to go to a hospice facility and we go to the patient wherever that patient lives whether it is in a hotel we've cared for someone in a hotel before um, at an apartment at their home in a nursing home at an assisted living or even in the hospital we can care for that patient um, but as you all you know can imagine with any serious illness, life can become a roller coaster of emotions from hope one minute to, you know, feelings of despair the next. And, you know, one of the things that we really encourage is that hope, um, hope for things that may be different than curative care, but uh, hope for comfort and maybe some closure on things that that um, that patient, you know, whether it's relationships that they want to mend or something like that. We try to encourage all that and kind of you know, ease them through their last uh, months or, or even weeks um, here, so. Well, who can receive hospice care and how does a family receive this for their family member? Anyone can receive hospice care. Usually there's a prognosis of six months or less uh, determined by the physician. So a doctor has to write the order um, or a nurse practitioner. Um, we can receive referrals from anyone, but then we have to follow up with the physician to get the doc to get the order. Um, anyone with any life-limiting illness does not mean that they have to pass away in six months. We've had uh, we had a lady one time for six years. I like to use her as wow. a, she was she was amazing, and she actually cried because she she became too well to continue to with hospice, care. and right. she she missed the social worker, the chaplain the home health aid and all those that became a part of her life. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily, it's with any illness. And I think a lot of mm -hmm. times people perceive that as having a, or a cancer, mm -hmm. any type of cancer, but it's any type of illness mm -hmm. that, that, they can, that they can receive hospice care. Right. Right. Any, any end stage disease process, whether it's congestive heart failure, uh, even dementia uh, can qualify someone for hospice, the later stages of dementia. And that was exactly, my mother had Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So is it covered by insurance? Yes. It's covered 100% by Medicare. It's covered 100% by Medicaid and by most private insurance companies. Um, and then we also do take some non-funded patients as well. So, 
One of the things that um, was very impressive to me with hospice is how they don't just take care of the patient, they take care of the caregivers as well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because it was such a blessing to us as caregivers. I think that's really, you know, one of the most important things of hospice because uh, not only do you get a nurse and a home health aide to help with personal care, but the social worker and chaplain are very important in the care and just making sure that their needs are met. Uh, tell them a little bit about our bereavement. And well, during service and then, and then the follow-up after um, the service to that patient, everything is a holistic approach, and that's why you have you know, the social worker, the chaplain, and then the nurse. You're addressing physical, social, and spiritual needs of the family and the patient. Um, but we also have a 13-month bereavement program, and that gets, you know, that's where we follow up with the families, with, with the chaplain. Um, they follow up with the families for at least 13 months after that patient passes away. That's to get them through the first birthday and the first holidays and all those firsts um, after their loved one passes away. So we think that's really important. And we also have memorial services um, twice a year for, for those families to kind of get together and, and you know, talk about memories and everything and honor and in memory of, of that patient, so. But the folks don't actually stay in the home or the nursing home or hospital. You just come visit when you're needed mm -hmm. and uh, provide the care that way. I would highly recommend this to anyone who has a, a family member. Um, you know, Denise, you remember our situation yes. and, and it was such a blessing to us. So how can people contact you if they think that hospice care might be right for their situation? They can call us and we would be glad to sit down and talk to them, and, uh, but we have to have a doctor's order to actually do an evaluation. Uh, they can call our office. Our Cookville office is 931-528-5133 and just um, you know, talk to the nurses there and give them their information. Then we can co contact their doctor to get an order to evaluate. Uh, if they're not appropriate, you know, we're the first to say you're not quite there because Medicare does set forth strict guidelines. Uh, you're not a hospice appropriate, but, you know, we recommend you stay with home health because we're not in competition with home health. We come in when home health can no longer uh, mm -hmm. serve them and provide curative care. Uh, that's another thing with hospice. Um, that's when there's not curative treatment. Uh, that they're seeking, like chemo or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we want them to have everything they need for comfort, whether it's to treat a urinary tract infection or pneumonia, anything like that. So, And we're on call 24 mm -hmm. hours a day for our patients and our families. Wow. Uh, so, you know, we, we try to cut down on those, call it those emergency room trips and those mm -hmm. kind of things. We come to them where they don't have to get their right. patient out, where they're probably not physically able mm -hmm. to get out. That is such a blessing in the lives of those helping and assisting that individual too. Right. But as well as Debbie, we have all this information. If they, for some reason, uh, didn't get your number, it's all at the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and on our website as well. And the main thing I think families need to understand is that they're not giving up when they choose hospice, because so often they think That's their last. that means I'm going to die, mm, yes. you know, and it doesn't. We discharge patients all the time because they get better and they actually live longer. Mm -hmm. There's actually been a study done that says um, that the average hospice patient lived 29 days longer than those that were not receiving hospice care. Wow. And I've seen it happen a lot, especially with our failure to thrive patients where, mm -hmm. you know, they just weren't eating or they were having, you know, frequent hospitalizations and things like that and infections um, we've actually seen them get better and graduate from service once our whole team comes in and, and addresses all of their needs. Well and assists them and mm -hmm. addresses their needs and and actually keeping them from having to go back and forth to the hospital mm -hmm. which wears down on you so much. Mm -hmm. And well, we don't, I'm sorry. No I was just gonna say I commend you both for such a wonderful profession well, because we you're love a blessing it. to so many. We, we love it, we have a passion for it and I do want to say too, we don't take the place of the physician. We work hand in hand with the physician. He still remains in control of that patient's care. Well, thank you so much thank for you. coming today. We thank sure you. do appreciate you being with us and sharing this wonderful information thank with you. our listening audience. Thank you. I have a very special guest, Denise, that I want to introduce right now. This is my coworker, 
our new 4-H agent here in Smith County. I say new Trent, but how long have you been here? I've been here about six months. Now. Six months. This is Trent Jones. He and his family have moved to Smith County, and we are so tickled to have him, Denise. He is an awesome 4-H agent, and today I asked him to come and uh, to tell us a little bit about 4-H camp, which has been going on for a long time. I know a lot of our listeners have been before. Tell us about it, Trent. When's it going to be? 4-H camp this year for Smith County uh, will be June the 11th through the 15th. Uh, we're currently doing sign-ups right now, so you can stop in by the office. Uh, deadline for that is May the 18th. Uh, camp cost this year is $240. Uh, that includes all your transportation, your meals, all the lodging, uh, everything that you will basically need there at camp other than some crafts that you will make and some of the snacks that you'll get from the camp canteen. Uh, you can come in, pick up an application form in our office. Uh, that's at 125 Gordonsville Highway. Uh, next to Turner's Market or the Smith County Middle School. Uh, come in there and see our secretary, Miss Barbara, and she'll get you signed up uh, for that. You can pay that day the full 240, or we can break it up into different payments for you. And you know, uh, Trent, a lot of folks, as I said, have probably been to 4-H camp in Crossville. Denise, did you get to I go? I am a 4-H camp alumni. There you go. And I have wonderful, wonderful memories from coming to 4-H camp. It is an absolute fabulous experience to do, to go through. I relish those, I have wonderful memories and I learned so much. I learned to meet other people, to get out of my comfort zone and I learned so much just going to that camp for a week. It was a wonderful experience. Yes, ma'am. But I bet it's changed a lot uh, since you were there. Oh, I'm and sure it has. Trent, um, uh, tell them a little bit about what's to offer at camp because I know the, the pool that we used to have Oh, it's different. We've oh, got a really? water slide, Denise. Oh, my yeah, word. Right. So tell them about, a little bit about camp. Our, our camping center there at Crossville, the Clyde York 4-H Center, it's 196 acres. Uh, so it's one of the largest camping centers uh, for 4-H uh, around this part of the, the U.S. Uh, like I said, we have the, probably the most favorite part for all our kids is the Olympic size swimming pool. Uh, they want to make sure they get plenty of swimming. And the uh, water slide, which Mr. Jones is the biggest kid on the water slide, literally. <laughs> so I enjoy that. Uh, we also have uh, there uh, two lakes where you can go kayaking, canoeing. Uh, they're fully stocked for fishing. Uh, so that's something that some kids in this area get to do quite a bit, but a lot of kids don't. Absolutely. Uh, and like you said, meeting many new friends. We'll be going with several other different counties uh, mm -hmm. from across Middle Tennessee. So you meet other kids from other schools that you may not see uh, or kids from other counties. And remember, that is for fourth and sixth graders for our junior It's camp. just for fourth through sixth grade this year. Yes, ma'am, for junior And, and uh, the, the registration did start this week. I had a, a, a lady come in and sign up at 7.20 the other mo Monday morning. So uh, is there a limit on the number of people we can take? We can take uh, 52 uh, 4-Hers uh, along with a few adult and teen leaders and myself, of course. And uh, if we do fill up, we're usually able to accommodate everyone that signs up for that. Okay. Uh, and you asked about some of the activities. Some of those we do have. Of course, we shoot 22 rifles. We have a rifle range, archery range, uh, craft shacks where we do tie-dye, t-shirts, all those things. Uh, all Something way down. for everyone. Yeah, exactly. So there's lots of different. And we do uh, have a few educational events with our science and engineering and technology this year. Uh, they're actually going to do a CSI investigation. Oh, wow. And uh, do some things like that. So. Can Lots I of great opportunities. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And we need volunteer. <laughs> we need adult leaders. Yes, ma'am. You may have just gotten yourself a volunteer. <laughs> I will say this, too. Camp is a little bit better than it used to be, Denise, because exactly. now they have air conditioning oh, in the barracks. Oh, yes, so. And fully remodeled uh, in the last couple of years, so very nice. Camp. Yes, I it is. Much much better than it was when you were a child. I'm Not that you don't have those memories, but it's just a little upscale. Uh, a little oh, bit yes. more upscale oh, yes. than yes, what we had. All right, Trent, thank you so much, and uh, y'all be sure, and, and if you come in our office, to welcome Trent to Smith County. We're so tickled to have him, and thank you for telling us about 4-H Camp today. Thank, thank you, you Trent. I wanted to uh, share with the group today, all of you who are in our listening audience, that we have an exciting program that's going to be coming up April the 16th. That's Monday, and uh, Monday, April 16th, and it's called Living Well with Chronic Conditions. And this program is for anyone that does have a chronic condition, such as heart disease, uh, it could be cancer, it could be uh, arthritis, uh, anything that is chronic and something that you have to live with, but you would like to have a better quality of life. This program is for you. It's a six-week program 
We meet two hours from two until four every Monday starting April the 16th. There, uh, by the way, this is a free uh, program and it's open to anyone in our listening audience. If you'd like to come, we would love to have you. There is no charge for this program. We go over a lot of things, and I say we because Melissa Ross and I, Melissa is the uh, public health educator with the health department, and uh, we will be teaching this. We've been trained through Sanford University in California, and this program helps uh, folks who maybe live with someone with a, with a chronic condition or someone that has a chronic condition, and what it does, it helps you to be able to have a better quality of life, we teach you about uh, in, in a better healthy eating, uh, exercise, what you can do, what your limitations are. We uh, teach goal setting so that you will have something to look forward to. It's a wonderful program. Uh, there's a limit on the number we can take. It is free, by the way. And so we would love for you to uh, come with us, uh, come to see us at this program. The number you can call is 735 2900 and uh, we would love to have you participate we need you to call though and get on the list before uh, it fills up now you will be getting a free book and a relaxation CD again it's from 2 to 4 it's gonna be at the Chamber of Commerce so uh, please call and sign up uh, it's just coming right up on us and we don't want you to miss it that's a wonderful program, Janie, and I think it's fabulous that you're offering it to people in Smith County. There's so many people with a chronic condition, sure. such as diabetes, and, and just a little bit of extra support. That's yes, a wonderful is. opportunity to be offered free. Exactly. And I have something very exciting that we have oh, new too. here in Smith County, and we have Mr. Aura Eads with the Eads Museum here. It's a chamber member spotlight. They're new chamber members, and we are actually, believe it or not, in an old tobacco warehouse that has been transformed to this wonderful museum. And Mr. Eads, tell us about the museum and, and where it's located and tell us how you came to Carthage. Okay, well we looked for years for a place to put a museum. Clarksville, Linden, Columbia, Nashville. We finally found one up here that would work. It's big enough, it could be retrofitted to make a museum and so we bought this one uh, about six seven years ago mm -hmm. then we spent the next five years renovating the building what it was originally was the Carthage tobacco warehouse uh, and we built in the walls and built in 26 galleries of the museum oh my there. goodness yes uh, there are 26 galleries. Uh, we decided not to call it an art museum, though we do have a lot of art. There's paintings, probably 200 of them. There's art glass, pottery, uh, African art, Asian art. But we also have quilts, rugs, a uh, 1940s kitchen, including the radio that they probably set out to hear uh, about Pearl Harbor got bombed. Uh, we've got uh, metals, particularly uh, but we're particularly strong in aluminum, including some of the old hand hammered pieces that the ladies made in the home demonstration clubs. We've got all kinds of furniture going back to even the 1600s. Coins as far back as 2,600 years. Uh, we've got a religious gallery, and most of these galleries are 50-foot long rooms. Yes, they're huge. They're, and slipping in here is Miss Eleanor. She's your cohort in crime here at the museum, right. isn't she? She is. We're so glad you're with us, too. We, she had a little bit of a, a visitor come and she, that she had to take care of, uh, but we're glad to have you, too, Miss Eleanor. Thank you. And you were talking about uh, galleries. We are in the Tennessee Gallery. Right. So everything in this gallery was made in Tennessee. Yes. Uh -huh. Wonderful antiques. Tell us about this piece right here, Mr. Eads. That's an old schoolmaster's desk. Uh, the front opens up. The teacher could put his notes and books inside there and could sit there. We also have one where he would stand up. But if he wanted to sit, that's a sitting time. And what does this date back to, probably? Oh, 1880 or something 1880. like that. 1880, wow, wow, that's fabulous. And there's other, there's a, 
an old rope bed back there yes, and uh -huh. an unusual table behind Janie that it's a table chair? Yes, you can sit in it as a chair, but if you need the table space, you fold it the back up and over and it makes a table. And it makes a table. Um, we have some other items here that we want to show you. We'll start on this end. And this is a very special piece from a, a wonderful artist in amongst us. <laughs> and you had said this is kind of, this is going to be kind of your logo. Yes, it is. Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, we call that a barn in the snow. And it was <laughs> painted by my wife, Ellen Miller. Mm -hmm. It's all on canvas. All on canvas. Beautiful. It is very beautiful. <coughs> but this piece right here dates back a little bit further. Tell us yeah. about this. And I've been afraid to touch it. This is something very, very, it's very heavy. But tell us what that is, Mr. Eads. Well, that is a uh, fossil that's about 65 million years old. And it's actually a dinosaur egg. Though the egg has, over the time, changed to stone. And that's why it's so heavy, too. So it's a dinosaur egg. Yes. My goodness. Came, came from the desert over in China. Now, where, how did you get your hands? You have been collecting for years. And I've been collecting for about 60 years since my wow. mother told me if you go underneath the, the porch of the old house, uh, you might find coins where people dropped them and they fell through the boards, and I did. My. And that got you started on this process. That started me on collecting, and I just collected anything that was interesting. After We're glad that. you did because it's benefiting Smith County. I want to hear more about some of these things here. What's the? Uh, and tell us next. What is this? Well, that's called a face jug, and it was made by somebody here in Tennessee, up at Smithfield. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's a face. So it's got a inside where you could fill it with whiskey and put a cork top on it. But it's a face with actual teeth in the mouth. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. And tell us about this piece. This one is from China. It's carved jade, and it's a teapot. The lid comes off, you put the tea in it. And this one dates from about the year 1700 B.C. My goodness. From the Chow Dynasty. Okay, and the next piece. That one is a Benin bronze. The Benin kingdom was a kingdom over in Africa in the area of what's today known as Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of uh, approximately 2,000 bronze pieces that were brought out of there after the British went to war with the king of Benin. And they did it a little different back then in the 1800s. Uh, England won the war, and so they expected the loser to pay for it. But the kingdom of Benin didn't have any money, so they just went in the royal palace and found about 2,000 bronze items and took them out as the cost of the war. Wow. Amazing. Now, what is this? Tell us a little bit about That's it. an old stock certificate from 1885, and it's from a bank in Nashville. We do have a gallery over here with quite a few stock certificates, and what's pr really pretty about them is the engravings. Because you know now you can buy stock, but it's just in the computer. Mm, that, that has taken some away. And underneath it, um, is this a part? No, it just was attached. Tell us a little bit about this. That is a Russian icon. Uh, it's a religious painting covered over with metal. Uh, it was painted back in at least the early 1800s. And while the communists were in power over there, they tried to confiscate those and destroy them because they didn't want the people uh, worshiping Christ. That one was hidden by a Russian family, and it was hidden through the whole time that the communists were in power. Wow. Then when, when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, the people started bringing out their religious symbols, and that was one of them. So that is, um, that's an amazing story behind that one. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a unique dish. Tell <laughs> us about this. <laughs> that is hand-blown glass by Curtis Brock. And Curtis is a Tennessee glass blower. He's been here for a couple decades. And pretty well known in this area because he teaches up at the Joe Eleven Center for Crafts. Oh, wow. We, you have uh, several pieces, I see, from 
from up there. Yes, Wonderful. Sure do. Wonderful. What about this table? That's a school child's desk table from about 1880 or so. It's beautiful, beautiful Good. table. What's this piece here that we have in front of us? This beautiful exhibit of hand penmanship. This is an old deed from 1876. Handwritten. Let me hold it up so they can hear okay. you, see you talk. <laughs> Handwritten with all the government stamps. This one is a, this is from England. This is a stamp with a silver center. Over there, the government got, got tax money too when property transferred just like here. Mm -hmm. On the back of it, it says deed and uh, has another tax stamp there from 1876. 1876, mm -hmm. that is amazing. I'm scared I'm going to tear it. So I'm very, <laughs> going to be very, very careful. Okay, and this is, tell us what this, this is a war? This is from World War II. It's a ration book. Would you like for me to hold it mm -hmm. for you? I remember hearing about the ration books. Yeah, a lot was rationed during the war. They were short on a lot of goods, uh, including coffee and sugar, and that particular one, shoes. The ration books were issued to families that had to go into the government to, to qualify to get the books. And then it had stamps that they could use to buy the rationed goods. And they call it rationing, but I thought it was pretty interesting. They were allowed two pairs of shoes a year. My goodness. Hmm. My. Well, you have 26 galleries yes, here. Yes, we do. All filled with everything from quilts. Yes. Uh, some even made here in Tennessee. We've got a friendship quilt from this county, in fact. It has uh, about 20 names of people that cooperated in making it. Yes, and tell us about some of your other galleries, and everyone has its own specific um, entity. Tell us about some of the other galleries. Okay. Well, we've got a textile gallery. The oldest thing in it dates from about 800, year 800. My goodness, and what is that piece? It's part of a Peruvian Inca mummy bundle. Oh. You know, down there where they have the drier climate, uh, they were able to preserve the bodies. They wrapped them in cloth, and this would have been handmade cloth back then. Wow. Yes. And the piece we have on display actually has designs on it. You, you can see a warrior holding a shield and a, and a sword. Wow. And then we have also in that textile gallery uh, christening dresses, uh, baby dresses dating back 150 years, even a Old pair of bloomers. Beautiful handiwork. <laughs> beautiful handwork that we just don't see very much anymore. A lot of the needlepoint that the ladies used to do. Uh, yes. A lot of that on display. Well, and this is just a huge museum, but you also have an auditorium that we can do. be rented to the public right. for special shows such as maybe coin shows. Right. Uh, the possibility of any type of art exhibit, right. as well as for families to possibly rent out. Right, yeah, it's, it's about 1,500 square feet. We've got uh, tables so that we can have uh, stamp shows, jewelry shows, knife shows. Uh, the dealers will be able to have a sales table and a backup table. Uh, mm -hmm. We've also got a stage, so if somebody wanted to do a wedding, uh, they could use our podium and. Right. Got a piano, somebody could play the wedding march on. Well, um, you also have a gift shop. We do, yes. Uh, and Miss Eleanor, I know, has worked diligently to get that set up. So sure not does. only can you come in, and in the, the gift shop, there are antiques in it that you can purchase. Yes, there are. So yeah. that's amazing. I have a question, Denise, that I've got to ask. <laughs> Where did you put all this before you opened your Eads Museum? I mean, this is in, an incredible, I mean, that doesn't even scrape the surface, but it's an incredible collection. Where did you put it? In the 1840s townhouse that we live in in Nashville, which has 6,000 square feet, it has a two-story carriage house on the back. And then when we bought this building, we started bringing stuff in and, you know, 
acquiring a few more things. <laughs> so you acquired these from your travels, I assume, mm -hmm. or just from various from sources auctions, then? From auctions, from uh, like the African stuff. It's from a king's son that actually brings it back out of Africa. Wow. And that's an amazing exhibit if it you is. haven't seen it. And, and also, you acquired some of your museum pieces from the Chicago Museum, A Chicago area, one yes. We got two thirds of their collection when they deaccessioned it. And there's another museum. One from California, that and you we have. got to most of their collection. Well, let's tell everyone where you're located. We're at 154 Main Street South in South Carthage. We're just down from the city hall. Uh, we're right beside the new fire hall. Right beside the new fire hall, and your operating hours. Well, we're here definitely on Thursdays and Fridays from 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. uh, some weeks we're here as many as six days, but it'd be best to call to be sure if it's not a Thursday or Friday. Our phone number is 735-0085. Well, and also, you're open to, to hosting. I know that we have discussed about school groups. Yes. coming here mm -hmm. and and bringing the school groups here as well as you have had some individuals like that are having their family reunions and they're bringing them i think yeah. that's a wonderful it concept a but it's mm -hmm. amazing what you have transformed this tobacco warehouse into it is just a fabulous museum wonderful for anyone to come and visit and we're so proud to have you in smith county it is a Thank wonderful you. asset to smith county you have brought culture to our community, <laughs> and we thank you so much for doing this. Now, what is the cost to get in? $12 for adults, $10 seniors, and $5 for children. Okay. And, and you are also doing additional work. You've gotten everything in here, but you're still tweaking. You're getting your parking lot ready. Right. Uh, the door that we came in is actually not going to be your permanent front right. door. So it's continually, you're continually upgrading and making it more accessible. And it's a fabulous place. So we are so right. thrilled that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Denise, we have had a wonderful program today. I have enjoyed everything that we've uh, gone through today, but we do have some announcements about some upcoming events. And to start with, since I work for UT Extension, I'd like to share with you some things that are coming up. Um, on May 1st, Tuesday, May 1st at 6.30, for those of you who uh, uh, in the, are in the Beef Quality Assurance Program or would like to be, and by the way, we refer to this as BQA, and it stands for Beef Quality Assurance. There will be a recertification meeting. It will be held again at uh, 6.30, May 1st, at the Smith County Chamber of Commerce. If you would like to sign up for that, please get on our list right away. We had three, uh, one person call for three people today. The number to call is 735-2900, and we will put you on our list. This is, uh, the certification is good for two years of certification, and it's required if you want to uh, be in the Tennessee Ag Enhancement Program. So, uh, and also on the Master Beef Producer Program, you must have your BQA uh, recertification done. Again, that number to call is 735-2900. Something else that's coming up that uh, Extension folks are, are really proud of is the tree and shrub sale that we have every spring and every fall. Now it tends to rain or be cold, we're believing it's not going to this year. That will be held, for those of you who might be interested, Friday, April 20th from 8 to 4 at the Extension Office, and I'll give you the location in a moment, and on Saturday, April 21st from 8 until 2 p.m. Uh, this particular uh, sale, there will be anything from fruit trees, shade trees, ornamental shrubs trees. There's, the guy brings all kinds of things. There's a big tent set up right next to Turner Sitgo Station, located on Highway 53, and we're right in front of the middle school, if that helps you any. We'll be at the USDA Service Center Building 125, Gordonsville Highway, uh, and the proceeds of this go toward uh, the Smith County Youth Conservation Board and UT Extension, and there's some really good prices, and we'll have lots of trees and shrubs, so if you're in the mood to start landscaping, this is the place you need to come, for sure. Also, I want to share with you about some things that will be coming up uh, very soon. If you like 
crafts and things like that. You know, Denise, what I'm talking about when people used to do crafts and yes. things. Well, my county council with the FCE clubs here in the county are offering an abundant uh, number of, of classes, so I want to hit on a few okay, of those. Uh, coming up uh, on April the 11th um, is a long underwear craft. It's, it's a wall hanging, and you have to see it to understand, but it will be on our website real soon uh, through UT Extension Smith County office. And uh, it's not actually, it's made out of little girl's socks. So I just oh, want to, uh, don't worry, it won't be underwear. Cute. Also, a card making workshop will be held April 17th and again on May 15th. And there is a charge for these, but call our office 735-2900. We will be happy to put you on the list. There is a men's tie quilt block workshop. If you have old ties that you would like to, maybe from husband, uh, brother, father, whatever, uncle, that you would like to preserve and make a memory out of it, we show you actually how to make this into a quilt block that you can uh, put in a frame and show in your home. So that will be coming up May the 3rd. Then in June, we have a basket workshop and so forth and so on. So in our next program, I'll be telling you about some more things that are coming up, but I just wanted to sort of whet your appetites if you're interested. This is open to anyone, by the way. The number to call is 735-2900 if you'd like to participate in any of these workshops. On April 16th, uh, the Pregnancy Help Center award, uh, annual banquet will be from 6.30 until 8 o'clock at the Smith County Ag Center. It's a fundraiser and door prizes will be drawn. If you would be interested in attending that and helping in this worthwhile cause, uh, you can call 281-8054 uh, and you must respond by April the 10th if you're interested. On April the 19th, Denise, there will be emergency preparedness drill that we talked about earlier yes. and it will also be held at the Smith County Ag Center. Also on April 19th, the Chamber of Commerce meeting uh, along with the Smith County Industrial Alliance will be meeting and the WEOC meeting beginning at 11 o'clock um, and at 12 o'clock a, a guest speaker Reginald Strong with the Tennessee Department of uh, Labor and Workforce Development will be presenting a program on workplace violence. Yes. We don't think about that happening but that will be an interesting program. On April the 26th, there's a fair board meeting. And if you would like to be a part of our fair board, uh, come to this meeting. It starts at 5.30 at the Ag Center. Again, that's on April 26th. We are already deep in selling ads. If you would like to donate uh, to our, our fair uh, by getting an ad in our, in the, I guess it's what a brochure, yes, you would call brochure. it, the fair program. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need your help. You know, we've lost a lot of businesses. We need your help. So we could use your donations and we, with that, you can purchase an ad with, in the newspaper that will go in the fair program. Finally, on my part, April 24th at 7.30, the Youth Leadership Opportunity Smith County Graduation and Project will be held at the Smith County Chamber. Congratulations to those young folks. We had 21 to go through the Youth Leadership Program this year. That's it awesome. was a wonderful program, and we're going to be having their graduation and a lunch for them. And then on the 26th, our adult leadership is in full swing, and we will be meeting that morning at 8 o'clock, and our session is the History and Tourism of Smith County. And that's going to be a very fun day, going out through Smith County and seeing places I've lived here all my life. But I've learned that there are places that I wasn't aware, had not known about, so you learn a tremendous amount about your community. On April 28th, the GE testing is available at the Smith County uh, Board of Education. Please call 735-8264 for additional information. Um, then, the, the, as you mentioned, your spring shrub, shrub sale, that's hard to say, Shrubbing. spring shrub sale. <laughs> yes, that's yes. at the UT Extension office, and Ms. Janie gave you all of that information. Now. One thing that we want to let all of the small businesses know in Smith County is that you can receive professional one-on-one -on -one counseling at the Chamber through the Tennessee Small Business Development Center. We have classes available from social media to marketing. Anything that you might need help with or assistance with with your business. If things are not going so well and you think, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, or if you're saying, you know, I really think that we need 
to have a web page. I really think we might need a Facebook. Anything that your business needs, we have time set up with professionals. You just call the chamber. It is free to you. Anything that the chamber can do to assist you in your business, your profit profitability and help your business to grow. I know that Mr. Eads has taken um, advantage of this process mm -hmm. and it's it's open to any Smith County business, which is a, a wonderful opportunity for any business. And it might give a small business an edge in today's economy. We can use all the help we can get. Absolutely. And where can you go to get free professional help? So uh, we're glad that you've joined us today. I encourage you, if you have any questions about anything that we mentioned and want to know more about any of these chamber members of, or any of these happenings, call the Chamber of Commerce and we're happy to help you to find out this information. We're thrilled to have been here to the wonderful Eads Museum oh, and yes. we encourage you to come and visit this wonderful place. Um, and it's just a wonderful cultural. You'll learn a tremendous amount from your visit here. Thank you for joining us.